Thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of your meeting. It's an exciting day for Mary County 4-H, and we're starting a new era. And it's so good to have such good support here from friends, from 4-Hers, and parents. At this time, I'd like to turn the meeting over to Dr. Paul Brown. He's Associate Director with the Alabama Cooperative Extension System, and he's Interim Director of the four Alabama 4-H four Program. Thanks, Lisa. Chairman Davis, Commissioner Jackson, Commissioner Bird, Commissioner Knight, Commissioner Burleson, thank you for having us uh, part of your agenda on a bright mark, uh, early Monday morning um, and have uh, like some good news to share with you today. As Lisa indicated, uh, we're here to celebrate 4-H in Marion County. And the Marion County 4-H team has achieved a milestone that we'd like to celebrate. To give you a little bit of a history about what's brought us to today, I'd like to start with uh, where we were in 2014. 2014, if you uh, may not be aware, it was the centennial uh, of the Cooperative Extension System nationwide. Uh, it was signed into law by, uh, uh, by President Wilson in 1914 that established a partnership between the USDA the state of Alabama and our 67 counties and we've celebrated that 100 year anniversary in 2014. But one of the things that we wanted to do as we looked at that centennial year, we looked back of course as we look forward, and one of the things that was very obvious to us is that the 4-H program has been something that's been very important in the success of the extension idea that started 100 years ago and is something that I think has probably helped keep the extension idea alive and thriving through the 20th century. And we started to look and say, okay, what, looking ahead, what are the things that we need to be thinking about as extension and there's the second century? And one of the things that we wanted to do is to look at how we could recast the youth program uh, in a way that would meet the needs of 21st century Alabama youth. And uh, one of the things uh, we, well, we certainly are all aware of that our demographics have changed uh, over that 100 year time frame. Um, and we also know that we have some very serious resource needs that we need to address uh, to make sure that we've got the staff in place to carry out an effective program. 
So in the early part of 2014, we organized 67 county teams, and we want to recognize that 4-H team here today that's helped us really recast the program in Marion County. And that team worked over the several months to look at forming a solid team, uh, developing a new 4-H uh, advisory council committee made up of adults that help lead the program. Uh, they've also established a youth council uh, bringing youth together, especially some of our older youth, to develop citizenship and, and uh, leadership skills. They also look very closely at the demographics of the county, looking at how do we need to reach kids and families today, developed a dynamic plan of work, and implemented a new uh, member management system. And uh, one of the things then, as Lisa indicated, is that counties that reach this milestone of looking at a strong plan for the future, a very active program, uh, they apply for this, this particular designation that we'd like to celebrate today, which is called the 4-H Centennial Youth Initiative designation. And uh, this is, uh, we've had 12 counties across the state that met this requirement, uh, Marion now being one of those. What we'd like to do today is present the county commission with what we're calling the Crystal Culver, having reached this milestone as one of our very important local partners, and then also to recognize the team uh, with some medals of recognition. But one of the things that really comes with this designation that's most important is that uh, Miss Ronnie Renee Brasher, that some of you may know, has served two counties, serving Fayette and Marion as the 4-H uh, agent. And uh, with this designation, we will be hiring a full-time person to work here in Marion County, uh, funded through the uh, through campus uh, the campus budget. And uh, and that that's one of the things that as each, each county across the state receives this designation, ultimately we will have 67 individuals working full-time uh, in our counties, and uh, we will also have perhaps uh, several agent assistants and others that might be funded more locally that would be able to help them along the way too. But really this is a, the reason we wanted to do this rec recognition here today is because the, the Marion County Commission has been a very important partner with us uh, through the years and as we look ahead. And one of the things that we want to do is share these highlights with you and look at how uh, the extension program here in Marion County and in particular the youth program is something that you all can be proud of. And what I'd like to do is ask uh, Chairman Davis to come forward and I'd like to present this to him, and the other commissioners are certainly welcome to gather around <coughs> and light the photo op, um, <laughs> um, and we could, we could do this jointly together. So. Can I just stand behind me as we're here, sure. and then... I want you to come up, uh, maybe come up and yes. present this to Chairman. Right. We can maybe go to the center spot, maybe. Yeah. this here today, but we'll find a safe place for it in the, in the county extension office. Okay, All right. thank you. <laughs> So we changed the title, uh, actually 4-H Foundation Agent or 4-H Agent, and uh, Ronnie Renee has covered uh, both counties. I think she's going to be moving to Fayette, and we already have the uh, announcement out and interview set for a full-time position here for Marion County. Right. 
And then also like to ask uh, Ginger Avery to come forward. Ginger is the uh, Administrative Support Associate and Assistant uh, serving Marion County uh, at the Extension Office. And uh, Ginger serves on the front line, answering the phone and, and walking, uh, taking care of the walk-in traffic. And then also Casey Holt. Uh, Casey has served uh, as an agent assistant, uh, helping out here locally, and we appreciate your help too, Casey. And this is our County 4-H team. special guests and the first one that I want to recognize is Ronnie Renee. I want to say thank you. She has been working so diligently working with our 4-H program and inspiring us in our connection to the state office and so we want to give her a little touch of our appreciation. At this time, you know, we couldn't do this without the support of the schools and the school system. And at this time, Ann West, who is Assistant um, Superintendent of the Marion County Schools, to so please come forward. And we want to present her with a token of our appreciation, and she'd like to make any comments. Well, first of all, I'm really delighted that I could be here today, and it means a lot to us to have the kind of 4-H programs that we have in our schools. It's very important to our students, and, and I'm you know, just happy to know personally some of the things that Olivia Bird has done for 4-H and the opportunities that she's had for traveling and, and learning how to be a great leader. And it, it's a great program. It's, it's a wonderful program. And I'm especially happy to hear you say that you're advertising for a full-time person to, to be in that position because it's such a, a great thing for our students to get to participate in. And we want to encourage our students to become great leaders and great members and contributing members of society. So it's a pleasure to be here today and thank you very much on behalf of our schools and, um, and just <coughs> keep doing thank what you. you're doing. <laughs> yes, thank our you. schools are also a great partner and we're in over half the elementaries across Alabama. Yeah, it's phenomenal. It's great. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Representing the Winfield City School System is uh, Principal uh, Scott Goodwin, and he would come forward. Make any comments. Ms. Murphy and her group have worked really well with us and helped our kids a whole lot. And echo what Ms. West said it's an opportunity for our kids to grow, learn, and learn some leadership skills. And, and I know I had a, a, a young lady that I graduated high school with. And, she took 4-H, was a national winner, ended up paying for her college. And uh, so, you know, there's a lot of opportunities out there for people to, to do that. And I'm uh, very proud. And, and we're trying to work more closely. We're doing some new projects at our school. And she was down to see us the other day and uh, really, really helping us and contributing a good partnership for us. And, uh, congratulations to all that y'all do. And thank, thank you, Professor, for your support. Thank you. You know, you, sometimes you don't hear really good comments, but one that, that I heard from that uh, Coach Goodwin made to one of our, our agents is that he thanked us for coming into his schools and pre presenting quality programs. And so you just don't know how much that meant to us as a team and as, as a staff. We really appreciate it. Next, we would like to recognize some of our mass media. It wouldn't be possible um, to achieve what we have without them. And um, I know, well, we call it PNN, but he, uh, I don't think Pete is here, but we will, we will get uh, his recognition to him as well. Next, we have another person, Drew, that, um, Drew Manley with Super ATV. And I've been working with Drew for two and a, two and a half years conducting Extension <coughs> TV programs, and he's been a true supporter, especially with our 4-H program. And Drew, if you'll come up and make any comments. Well, I didn't know I was going to be on TV. <laughs> Seriously. But, uh, oh, thank you so much. And I, I think I have more fun than anybody at this because I get to see all of you guys come in you know, on the extension program of 4-H, and I get to sit with you and hear the stories and projects and ideas that you're coming up with. And uh, 
it's, you know, at a time when our nation needs encouragement, you offer encouragement. And uh, without anything else, I'm just going to let that suffice to say that I thank you very much in the job that you are doing today and as you will continue to do in the future. Thank you much. Thank you. Thank you. Last but not least is Les Walters. I've known Les for 34 years. 34 years. <laughs> and uh, I don't want to say that um, don't believe everything he puts in the newspaper, <laughs> but I am not an expert at cooking possum. It's like he said. <laughs> but I do appreciate it. it created a special bond over the years. I hope it's respectful. Very, I, very much. So. <laughs> but I want to present this, and if you'd like to make any comments. There's not really anything much I can say. Drew kind of wrapped it up right there at the end, put a bow on it. But uh, I was in 4-H, and it was a great thing back then. It's a great thing now. The thing is, 4-H, just like Lisa has said, it's not the 4-H that I grew up with or any of the older ones that you were in, it's not the same 4-H. They have become more cutting edge. They have advanced. They're not still just staying where they were. That's a good thing. 4-H ranks right up there with me as far as publicity and wanting to make sure that we get the good word out as our servicemen and women, Boy <coughs> Scouts and Girl Scouts, our 4-Hers, uh, some of my very favorite groups. Uh, they're important. They're important. I also like the teen women. I don't put them in the paper, but I've also been uh, wanting to, but Ed always tells me I can't. <laughs> but be honest though, 4-Hers, you will become some of our great ones in the years to come, and we've had, I've looked back over the years, and we have had some great, great courageous, something to be proud of. Hey, it all goes back to y'all, and it goes back to y'all for providing for them. Thank you. Thank you. We take it to the home every night. So. And then I had to have, you know, what editor will come to on a Saturday morning come to the 4 H pet show? And so he's been there. I think he's just waiting for a dog fight. <laughs> but he I love, missed. I love the dog shows. I'm waiting for you to bring in monkeys. Yeah. <laughs> At this time, we'd like to recognize our 4 Hers that are present. Ms. Ronnie Renee, if you'll uh, um, assist me. At this time, we'd like to recognize Olivia Bird. Not only is she state, um, local county 4 H council president, she has just ended her term as state 4 H president, and we're so very proud of her. Her leadership abilities, She's participated in numerous activities. And, and I can say that, you know, a lot of times we've had 4-H presidents in the past, and, and we're very proud of them, and we're again proud of Olivia. Then we have Trevor Bird, her, her other half, but totally different. <laughs> and he is a master chicken cure, and that means barbecue and chicken. And so he'll be competing on the state level. Josh O'Meary. Last year he won first place in the freestyle exhibit with her his display of letters from the past, World War II. And then he'll be competing on the state level in photography exhibit. Then we have Nicole Parker. Nicole has been um, very active in the 4-H program. She has participated one state in the Healthy Living exhibit. She'll be competing in a different division in, the, in Healthy Living. She's won awards in photography exhibit. And then also she's noted for George at the 4-H pet show. <laughs> then we have Will Dickinson. Will 
is a uh, homeschool 4 H'er. He, and this is the first year we've had this club, and he came and participated on the county level, and he um, won awards, and I've got a story, and then also in the photography exhibit. Then we have Adriana Robinson, and this will be her first year to participate as a team at the state level in interior design. Then we have Mackenzie Holman, and this will be her second year to compete on the state level in interior design. And I have to admit, in times past, she's been club for at reporter, and I just see sites that she may be a reporter one day. <laughs> then we have Dalton Williams, and sort of Dalton just sort of spurred on the moment. He, he competed on the county level, and he won first place in Plantsville Science Exhibit. Freestyle Showcase, um, let's see, Extreme Bird House, and then also Blocks Rocks. And he's going to be competing at the state level in the Project Green Fund. We have one more. <laughs> one more. No, one more. <laughs> Abigail Duncan. And Abigail recently won the county uh, Farm City Essay Contest. And then also, she did such an amazing job when she read her speech at the uh, Farm City Banquet that I encouraged her to come back in public speaking, and she, she placed in public speaking. Congratulations. Let's give them all a big Did I miss anyone? Did I miss anyone? And last but not least is thank you to the 4-H parents. They could not do the 4-Hers perform in these projects if not for your support. At this time, I'd like to ask Olivia Bird to come up and to say a few words and make a presentation. I just want to say thank you to our commissioners as well as our staff at the 4-H office. 4-H um, does mean a lot to me. It has a special place in my heart because I've participated in 4-H for so long and I really am happy to see all the 4-Hers here today because you guys all mean so much to me too. Ms. Ronnie Renee has worked with all of us and I'm so glad that she will be getting some help in our county. I hate to see her go to Fayette, but <laughs> I do know that's where she lives and she's not far from us and she can always come back soon. Um, and I'm thankful for Ms. Murphy and Ms. Holt and Ms. Ginger as well. They do so much in our county office and we really appreciate them. Um, 4-H has provided with me with several opportunities, not only here in Hamilton, but to travel across the state and even to Washington, D.C. and do different things. And I encourage all the younger 4 hers in here and those who may be doing 4-H to stick around with 4-H and do some more of it in the future because the further you dive into 4-H, the more that they will let you do. And the more they realize that you're interested, the more doors open up for you, the more that you can do in 4-H. Um, I really appreciate Drew having us on the TV every once in a while. Um, he is a great encouragement, helps us to get the word out across town as well as our newspaper staff, and we really appreciate that too. So thank you all for everything that you do, our schools. I love you, Miss Ann. You do such a good job of working our schools, and we really appreciate that 4-H is a part of schools in Alabama. It's not like that in every other state, and we really appreciate that. So thank you all. This is just a sampling of the number of youth that we have involved in the 4-H program. We had 55 different 4-H types of clubs in the county, <coughs> reaching over 1,600 youths in the county over the past year. And so we're very excited that we're expanding our programs and we're offering different things. At this time, I'd like, since she's leaving us officially, I'd like for her to share a few words. I'd just like to say thank you so much to my 4 to our wonderful staff, and of course to the commissioner, for all your support over the past several years. It has definitely been a, a joy and an honor to work in Marion County. The people here are just so kind, and, and we're glad 
out of your way to help in any way, um, whether it's the schools and Mr. Goodwin and, and the American County uh, schools that I've worked with. They've just been so wonderful. And um, also, I can't leave out our 4-H volunteers. You know, one of the jobs when I was first hired was to recruit volunteers and work with those volunteers to start new clubs. And I can truly say it's been an honor to work with the people. People are so willing to donate their time. Um, we have volunteers like Miss Miss Mary in the back that um, I've joked. I said if my car broke down on the way home, I could call Susan and she'd come pick me up. So um, 4-H just means so much to me, and I was blessed to grow up in the program. And I look forward to continue to work for the program. And um, like they said, I'm going to Fett County, but I'm just going to be next door. But your heart is going to be here. Yes. <laughs> and I'm so sad to leave so many of my 4-Hers, but I, I definitely will be there for the person that is hired to help them transition. And we will continue to do things Fett and Mary County together. Thank you, Commissioner, for all your support. Thank you. Last but not least is the signing of the proclamation. And if it's all right, I will read this. It says, whereas the Marion County Office of the Alabama Cooperative Extension System has achieved excellence in all areas of Alabama 4-H programming, and whereas more than 1,600 Marion County youths have benefited from 4-H enrichment programs and 4-H clubs, Whereas 4-H in Marion County utilizes consistent research-based curriculum resources and aligns staff to support program resources and delivery modes. And whereas 4-H in Marion County addresses the needs of youth through hands-on learning programs and positive youth development. And whereas 4-H in Marion County builds youth's character, self-esteem, leadership, and citizenship skills and focuses on critical issues affecting youth. And whereas 4-H in Marion County offers programs on science and technology, natural resources, career education, citizenship and leadership, and healthy lifestyles, and whereas the Marion County Extension <coughs> Office and its 4-H team, having met the high standards of excellence, has been designated as one of Alabama 4-H Centennial Youth Initiative Counties, and whereas in recognition of this achievement, an Alabama 4-H Foundation Extension Agent will serve the youth and citizens of Marion County as a dedicated 4-H agent serving our county alone. I love that word. <laughs> now, therefore, being it resolved that the Marion County Commission on the 13th day of July 2015 declares this, the year of the 4-H Centennial Youth Initiative in Marion County, Alabama. And we'll put, present this to the Chairman of the Commission for his signature. Thank you. Would any of the other commissioners like to make any comments? Mr. Burleson, I know you've been such a strong supporter of the 4-H program. Well, I think the fruits of labor are very, very uh, much on view here today. With the type of character that uh, children have and they develop through 4-H and be able to get up and speak and present themselves in such an uh, orderly manner. And it's a credit to you and the, the parents and the school that we turn out such quality young men and young women. So, very proud. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you so much. <coughs> Mr. Pacey, I'm coming to be a part of your meeting today. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> If we get, we need to get some pictures if that would be alright with the, with our 4-H'ers with y'all. If we can 4-H'ers if y'all would come up front. Mm -hmm. If y'all would just go around and get behind. Yeah. Make sure she's And then the call would get right um, and then, would y'all get it, Ann and, and, and Coach Goodman, if y'all would get in the picture?
What now? Oh, two more standing mm -hmm. here and two more standing on the side. Okay. So you all. Yeah. Okay. So the four H's. Yeah. Balance out. Yeah, we'll just. Who else? Olivia. What else do you want? Okay, Kenzie. Hey, Dan. Uh -huh. yeah. And y'all balance out. Send her over here. Come on, closer. Just stand close to them. That's a, they won't bite you. Come on, yeah. Yeah. Can you see me? <laughs> <them? laughs> yeah. Can you see me? <laughs> <laughs> you better watch it. I'm watching yeah. it. I got a one. That's what I work fine. Okay, with this white smile. Okay. Good.
Mike Shaw. Mike Shaw. Mike Shaw. Mike Shaw. City Councilman, Philip Garrison, City Councilman, Matt Ledick, City Judge. And we have Sonny Sato, the owner of our hotel. So we're all here today, and this is, is very important to us. And, and we appreciate y'all taking time to, to listen and, and talk to us. And we're going to ask you right off the bat uh, why we're here is asking you to reconsider your actions. And, and I'm going to tell you why. Um, we're very proud of the hotel. And, and y'all, I've seen a lot of you there. Uh, y'all even know what has been invested in Owen Sonny to, in his moment to share uh, some things about that. But uh, the hotel is economic development. Uh, it's not a manufacturing job as far as, as creating manufacturing jobs, but it has created some 47 jobs in this town. Uh, to give you a quick breakdown, uh, there's eight folks from Bria that works there. There's 11 folks from Hewitt, there's 9 folks from Hamilton, there's 11 folks from Winfield, and we've got 7 other folks from surrounding communities. And, and it has created, you see, employment for not only Hewitt, but for all of the county. Um, it has created a place that folks are stopping from out of, out of state. And we've had, uh, I know of a Toyota supplier that has stayed there, that opted to stay there instead of too close has spent four days there, and is actually interested in our area uh, after his stay there, but he would never have stopped had that hotel not been there. So this is the economic development tool that we're very proud of, and it's not only the property tax that's creating, it's creating sales tax, lodging tax for the county as well. Uh, so it's, it's employment, it's provided employment that is badly needed, some 47 jobs, and there's been some sizable investment made, not only in Ewan, but in this county. It goes into the millions of dollars. Uh, it's not a fly by night, it's here to stay. And Sonny, if you want to elaborate about that just a little bit, I sure. appreciate it. Well, thank you all for, for hearing us and, and giving us a chance to speak to you. And uh, The mayor did a wonderful job, and I think he shared exactly what we're, what we're there to do. Um, one thing I'd like you all to realize, you know, the mayor introduced me as the owner. I don't own anything. I'm just a caretaker. <laughs> the, the bank lent, loaned us the money, and the people that work there from your community, from your county, are the people who really take ownership of that hotel. I'm not there. I don't live there. I'm, I'm fortunate enough to find very good people from Hamilton, you and Winfield, Brilliant, all the surrounding county, area towns in the county that have come to work there, that have created a great team, 
and are giving the level of service. So I, I want you all to realize this is not my hotel, this is your hotel. And the, what the mayor had said is very true. We have been fortunate to be able to open, to develop a very nice project. Has anybody not been to the hotel yet? Well, if you haven't, I invite you to come out. We have a full-service restaurant. We have a meeting space. We have 100 rooms. We are, um, we are a, a hotel is a very unique business. The, the, the most unique part is it's a tax generation business because of sales tax. But it's one of the only businesses that will generate sales tax not from the local community. Most of our sales tax is generated from people coming through. So it's a benefit to a local community, a town, a county, because you're not taxing your own population, which could you imagine creating tax revenue without taxing your own population? That's a very rare thing. And that's one thing the hotel is allowing the county and the town to do. On top of that, like the mayor said, we've had, and, and the Toyota supplier was one, we've had many people that have stopped by that have, when they check in, have said they would not have stopped by. They would have kept on going to whether it was Jasper, or Birmingham, or if they're going the other direction to Fulton or Tupelo and spend the night. And those people are decision makers. We we can see it in how they spend, what they do, what they ask for, certain preferences. Um, being part of the Holiday Inn franchise, it's the largest hotel franchise and has one of the greatest rewards programs. So we can see when somebody checks in how many nights they've stayed, what hotels they've stayed. And when you get people that check in that have stayed in Dubai or um, uh, London or Paris, it all shows up. Those are not just travelers that are leisure. Those are people that are on business trips making decisions that could locate to this area. Um, the mayor made a comment, and I don't know if all y'all realize this. We've been open for a little over two months. And believe it or not, we've had four helicopters <laughs> land next door and people get out and spend the night with us. <laughs> which is a unique thing. We have 15 hotels. We, that's something I can't say is the case in any of our 15 hotels in, four, in two short months. So it, we feel like and we believe strongly that this hotel will benefit not just us, not just our employees, but the entire surrounding area. The city of Ewan, Marion County. We ask that, you know, it's a large investment. We create jobs. If I, and, I, and this is rough numbers, in the, in the two months, give or take, we have probably done, I think, Mayor, 100 and, I'm sorry, since, since the beginning of the year, because we had some payroll before that, before we opened, we've probably expensed about $150,000 in payroll dollars. That's payroll taxes, that's income, that's jobs. That's not counting construction. That's our people, clean up, starting the hotel. We will, by the end of the year, and this being our first year, hotels ramp up. They take a little bit of time. They lose a little money, and then they make money, and then hopefully you keep making money. Um, we will have somewhere around $600,000 in payroll uh, this year. Next year will probably be close to $700,000, and it will go up to about $800,000 is kind of how much payroll dollars that we will be creating through this one hotel. And that's direct payroll. That doesn't count landscapers that get hired on, delivery men that get hired on, the indirect jobs, but just direct jobs. That's what we will create. Not, not in a hypothetical world, but we've done this, we have other hotels, that's how much payroll we'll create in Marion County. We have 47 jobs, give or take, and we'll go up to about 60 jobs, which is what we will employ, and everybody will work. We've, we've only brought, I think, one person in to help from out of town, everybody, or from out of the county, just everybody else is local, and that person is actually going to be moving to the county. Um, I, I, I humbly ask that you consider assisting us because there is a ramp up period and it is a it's quite an investment and this will definitely help us um, deliver the level of service that we need to by giving that extra labor <coughs> thank you there's a so you mentioned that everybody likes about minimum wage there there's no minimum wage jobs there so that is uh, i think something unique for a service type industry uh, there's a there's thing I learned about from being around the hotel, something called TripAdvisor. Y'all may all know all about that. It's sort of like Facebook. Uh, folks will get on this and make comments after they have stayed, uh, and then the, the hotel can respond or not respond. And I had Pam pull this off for just quickly this morning for me. 
uh, this is from a businessman that stayed there one week ago. Stop by to check out the facilities for future business use. Odd, he said that. Uh, very pleasantly surprised. Did not know about the in-house restaurant, Grill 22, uh, until I got there and, and April gave a tour of the hotel. I will definitely be eating there again and uh, looking for business use conference room, great for business. Also, I'm sure for church activities. That's on TripAdvisor right there. This, this guy is from the Midwest. I traveled the Midwest and this is one of the best hotels I've stayed in. From an impeccable customer service at the front desk to the scrumptious menu and everything I ordered was fantastic, especially the homemade onion rings. The rooms were clean and the beds were comfortable. And uh, of course he mentioned the bar is a good place as well. Uh, Habitat for Humanity has used this uh, already. 3M has used this. Had to have a school, had a school reunion there, has used this. So it is being used by local folks that, and out of town folks as well. And there's more I can read you right here. Council members, y'all like to say anything? Engineer, Matt? Gentlemen, y'all privilege me with the honor of serving you on your C3 board, your, our economic development entity, and for that I'm, I'm most grateful. I'm, I'm, I'm honored that you put that trust in me to, to represent this board. Having said that, I know, as, as many of you know, that, that the economy is changing. Manufacturing jobs are, are not the only jobs that we go after anymore. Uh, our local economy will, will shift just like our national economy has, and we've got to shift our incentives and shift what, how we think about creating jobs. It's no longer just manufacturing jobs. We've got to be uh, thoughtful and, in, and intuitive about how we go about creating the jobs that are available. And, uh, Mr. Saiti and, and his family, through, through the help of, of so many, have created jobs, 47 jobs, and for that, uh, I would echo the mayor's thoughts and just ask that you please reconsider the decision with regard to the tax abatement. Someone remind me what precisely, precisely the type of tax abatement we're talking about and how much money that would be involved. Anybody? We asked, uh, we asked for five years. Uh, Money-wise, you know, right. This is new money y'all haven't had, so we're not asking you to get money out of your coffers that you've already got. And also, as I said, we're bringing in additional revenue through other taxes as well, even during this five-year period. And then after that, uh, you would then receive these funds uh, from now on. So that's I don't know Ed as far as dollars and well, cents. Well, what type of tax are you talking about, maybe? Uh, property tax. Property tax. Okay. And that, of course, education would be exempt from that. Um, you still pay that education tax. Okay. But we don't know. We don't know how much money would be involved. Then. That's seven thousand a year. Seven thousand a year. <laughs> Isn't that right, bro? Barbara Cooper told me between seven and eight thousand a year. The thing about it, we had to give any more people no tax break. We had <coughs> nothing down here. And none of them got no tax. We wasn't aware of it until the board brought up that they, they didn't pay. Let, let me ask you this it's still job creation. Uh, does it matter if it's a motel or if it's manufacturing? Uh, has any other hotel asked? No, no, it's just I've been on the county. How many hotels have been built in this county? You know, I, I can dare say that we're the only one in the size of 25,000 folks that's got this kind of hotel in the state. And uh, this speaks volumes on economic development and our stance. And, where our position is create jobs. Traditional hotels aren't going to create 40 jobs. That's the other thing. That this is a large scale hotel, full restaurant, full bar. A traditional hotel is only going to have 15 jobs. So for 40 jobs, that's the benefit. Are you on mark as far as what your expectations was by this point economically? To We're a little bit ahead. We are. Fortunately, we are. Um, some of that was augmented through um, there's a big railroad <coughs> project that helped boost us up for the past 30 days. Well, I'm sorry, what railroad, the railroad. NSF. Okay. So that helped us. Um, we'll get a good true picture, but realistically, we're ahead for the two months of where we thought we would be. So, you're, so you're thinking optimistically then? Optimistically, but you know, if the railroad is checked out, then it's a little bit of realism. So <laughs> we'll see. We'll see in the next 30 days. But um, we're still operating in a loss. Um, that's the biggest thing. Um, so, which we expect, but and that's kind of why we're asking for the assistance because it does take typically a hotel will take 
anywhere from 18 to 24 months to get to a break even, and then it starts creating income. And and the you know we didn't need it; we wouldn't ask for the help. But I, I'm assuming that some of y'all, not all of you, are business owners. And it, in a business, you can't spend it unless you have it. So if we make a choice that hey we we aren't making it, we have to cut. And okay. where we cut is typically payroll. You can't tell the bank no, they'll come take your property. You can't tell the vendors no, they'll quit delivering your goods that you have to service your customers. So we cut on payroll. And this is really what we're asking about is, you know, seven or eight thousand dollars, if 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 y'all can assist us, we can maintain the same payroll level and the same level of service. Because we do get outstanding comments. Right now, actually for out of our hotels and the hotels that Holiday Inn has, we're in the top 5% of the world as far as guest comments. We're running in the 90 percentile, which is very rare. Um, I believe we're actually 95 right now for the current month, for last month, which is very rare for, and we're, we're talking about percentile of over three to 4,000 hotels, not just in Mississippi or Alabama or the Southeast or the United States. This is globally for its Intercontinental Hotel Group, which is Holiday Inn, Holiday Inn Express, Candlewood, Intercontinental Hotel, um, uh, Indigo. There's, been, there's nine different hotel brands. So we're doing very well, but we're able to do that through service. We're very hands-on. We, we make sure that we staff accordingly. And that's really what we're asking for is that if you can give us this service, we can make, give that service level to our customers and keep the payroll dollars up. Do you think Quarter X is going to bring, the, eventually bring that level up uh, as far as customers? Or? I do. I absolutely do. I, we, I can just tell you from the, the years that we're under development and seeing the traffic increase, we were talking about that earlier, um, the increased traffic, um, and, and, and we look at our business in different ways, the, the transient customer, people on vacations, has really picked up. We see a lot of those people coming off the highway. We'll get you know anywhere from eight to fifteen people to just walk in, mm -hmm. no reservations, or they make a reservation on their phone. We can we have those metrics and we can look at, but they wouldn't have done it if they didn't know that it was there. But we weren't physically located there, and that's all new traffic because obviously when it was a two-lane road, people would go the other way and hit the interstate. And it's not finished in Birmingham. It's not officially, despite everybody, what it, it's not really officially, officially, officially. An interstate grid. So would would that be a factor then? It, it would really be a factor on the on the commercial side, the weekday business. Yeah. We see it picked up on the weekend, and we see pick up on the weekdays. But I think once, or I mean, obviously, I'm certain when that's connected, the the tra the traffic through the week, business travelers. I mean, it, it just makes it makes sense going Memphis to Atlanta. It's such a quick shot. I don't know if y'all can do this. Maybe you establish a minimum standard before y'all will give a tax abatement. That you got to invest so much or create so many jobs or something. There, I don't know if you can legally do that, but uh, that would help. Where Kenny was talking about that for a hotel, maybe any business would have to create so many jobs or invest so much before they'd be eligible. You know, that's something. Would that work, Matt? Legally. Well, I, I would defer to Mr. Hunt in advising the council on that issue, but I, I would certainly say that, um, you know, I think that there's no doubt that, that as the economy changes, just because we uh, we haven't done it doesn't mean we can't, we can't do it or shouldn't do it. I think we, we've got to think outside the box and think about how a changing economy is going to uh, require us to do things we haven't done if we're going to create the jobs such as this. And, and you know, to have that minimum... Uh, standard that you've got to have so many jobs or so so large a payroll, half a million dollar payroll or whatever, would certainly draw a line in the sand between everybody that uh, I talked Mr. Bird down the floor, didn't I? You had enough, Mr. Bird? No. Can he pick the candle? If you had some kind of threshold like that, then certainly you could you could have an objective measure and not just be playing willy nilly with with you know favorites, so to speak. Okay, you on the C3 board. Yes, yes, sir. I am. All right. We give all our taxes away, and then y'all come in here, and y'all need fifty thousand dollars. What we gonna come up with? Well, I mean, you know, that's one thing. Yeah. We are here to take care of the money, the county, and we ain't give nobody else no baby. And that big building you and down here, they gonna be in here if we give it. 
We don't like it if family can't treat one no different to us. Well, but I, that's the way I understand it. Yeah. Now. What you create in God is great. That's great for the county. That's what I said, if, But if you give all your money away, how are we going to afford y'all to try to create more jobs? Well, and I, I think now, I would. y'all explain that to me? <coughs> right. Sure. Yes, sir. I'll be happy to. I think. The, the fact that you have all of the new revenue that otherwise would not be on the table. No school tax, none of the other payroll taxes, none of the other revenues that are, that are stemming from the investment would not be there but for this holiday and but for this investment. So for us to come to you as a C3 board and say we need some incentives to attract new industry and, and, and expect you to say, you know, we don't have any because we gave it all to the Holiday Inn that we wouldn't have had to begin with if we didn't get, give them an incentive, just, you know, it doesn't make sense. Certainly, we couldn't expect you to give us money for, for other incentives because you attracted 47 new jobs. And I, you know, I feel uh, excited, as does everyone in my community that I've had any dealings with about this investment and about the prospects and and you uh, certainly Mr. Jackson is business owner and businessman you understand Mr. Safety's position with regard to the need to kind of kick that thing up for a few years to, to get him uh, down the road a little bit. Is that responsive to your to your question? Somewhat. Okay. <laughs> but you just let more money here in a few months. <laughs> Well, sure. I mean, you know, wants something. Everybody, they don't come <laughs> well, here to give us money, they come here to ask. Before I, one of the biggest things <laughs> is that we, if you do choose to do this, and it, and it is a, the, the payroll's there and the additional sales tax, but if the services aren't there for your community, which we're providing, which there was no services, the level of service that we provide was not there, that's what it's going to take to have more industry, which is what's really going to benefit the town and the, and the county is as more industry comes, more brick and mortar investment into your community. And, you know, I'm a business person, and I look at it like that. If I was in your position, what is this going to bring us? You know, we're talking about eight, nine, seven to eight thousand dollars is an investment. Are they, if one industry comes, will that be offset? Yes, it will be. Did you ask for five years? I am asking for five years. Well, if they build an industry, it's not going to be here for a year, it'll be here for 20, 30 years. We've also brought in two other pots of money to the sales tax and lodging tax. That we're asking nothing from there that you're going to get free, actually. We get two tax now. The property tax will come in after five years. That's three new taxes that you can have. Uh, this hotel wasn't here. This is new money. We're not asking you to reach in and take money out of what you have now. And, and I think also, you talked about other hotels. That's why I brought up the minimum requirements. Uh, make them toe the line. They come in and invest millions of dollars to create 47 jobs. You'll give it to them too. Because they, but if they don't, then they don't. They're not eligible. How much do we get out of lodging tax, bro? The lodging tax goes to your TRC fund. The money that's the property tax would be in the general fund. So if you cut the property tax for five years, it would come out of your general fund. Your TRC, you can only donate those to organizations for tourism, recreation, and convention. And as far as the occupational tax, we don't get anything from the payroll taxes. So we're not going to get nothing. Well, if you get it all back, except to have a We're looking at the thing. We've got to build a new jail. $11 million. <laughs> down the road, the federal judge is going to make sure. And we don't know how we're going to pay for it. They tell us we got to build it, but they don't tell you how you're going to pay for it. I don't know. I just like to see you consider it. I think it builds like everybody said, I don't see nothing. It's something you're getting that you never you hadn't had. You know, you're not losing anything, but it's just five years down the road, you know, it all be coming back to you. We're just trying to make an investment here to make the county and the town grow. You know, see, it's been a positive thing, and I'd really like to, to consider if you possibly can. And I understand that. I mean, you know, and you know, everybody's know, sitting there friends of mine. That 1% you know. lodging tax would equate to, for this year, $24,000. It wants to know the rest of it. 
No. Okay. Yeah. But for Mars, it'll be $24,000 or what? It won't out as Linfield and Hamilton. I don't think it'd be $24,000 out of every one we got, did it? No, it's not the TRC. No. How much larger taxes we received last year? All the hotels. It was approximately sixteen thousand. Sixteen. But the TRC was eight hundred. That's what I was explaining right here. Is those monies that come in, we divide those by five, so it goes to yeah, each district. Okay. That money goes to the towns that y'all ask for um, donations that they have, like a. Like May Fest or anything, we give yeah, that's what that's money. Fest. You know, we give thousand dollars out of that last year for a Fest. You, you don't have any thousands of dollars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's right. Right. Yeah. 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 And you know, I think those numbers are reflective of really what we're, how we distinguish what we're asking for, uh, gentlemen. We're, she's saying we got sixteen thousand from every, all of the oh, lodging right tax, here, taxes. Here. And Mr. Safety is 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 estimating that he's going to more than double that alone. You know, he's going to put 24 in, and I think that's how we, we can explain that what we're asking for is different than what anyone else is asking for because we're putting every every lodging tax in the county together, and it doesn't add up to as much as what he's going to be paying in. What kind of motel there's, there's a there's yeah. folks that stay in here that has never stayed here. And, and that's the unique thing about it because of what he has built. They're stopping and staying where they were staying in Tupelo, Birmingham, somewhere else. And uh, no disrespect to any other hotel that's in our county, but he is bringing in folks that usually have not been staying at all. Yeah. I think so, to be fair, and uh, of course I was, you know, my first trip to Holiday Inn, I thought, hey, you're not, you know, I'm sure. I mean, this this a uh, holiday inn that you expect when you're on the road. So I was, I was just sort of blown out of water with it uh, here. And I'm sure these other hotels here that I haven't been to in Winfield haven't uh, probably. So. But uh, to be fair and honest to the whole county, I think we'd have to go back and look at uh, if we give you five years, to offer five years to the other uh, motels also. Yeah. That would be... Uh, I, I mean, I, I think uh, it was good in my, my hometown of where I've lived all my life. I don't think it'd be fair to uh, do one for other what you couldn't do for the, for the people in Hamilton and Winfield. And I think we have to tell give us a little time. That's all yeah, we talk about. Talk about it. About it. You, you, got, you, you got it. Yeah. That's fine with me. Do, uh, do you charge you, uh, the employees there, do you all charge them the employment tax? Yes. Have you ever thought about dropping that? Uh, yeah, pal, sir. I mean, you're asking us uh, to drop our. The, the employees does that. You know, they, you know how that works. The employee actually pays that. I know. Yeah. We we have given him other incentives. We as a city yeah. uh, uh, did abate the tax on it, and uh, we yeah. give him also other incentives too that would. The city stepped up and we've done what we can to yeah. bring this business in. And realize there is 47 people that didn't have jobs, got jobs. Yeah, that's true. Not, true. not yeah. just from you, and it's almost split equally uh, between we feel you and have to breathe. Yeah. So, you know <clears throat> okay. If, it, if I'm correct, and it's my understanding that that money would go into the TRC, what she just um, talked about. No. You said something about Mayfest. Well, my understanding, it, wait a minute. It goes to help also fire departments keep up their standards, which in turn makes the insurance company, you know, the insurance um, a lot lower, you know, the ratings and all for the people in every town. So that money is being used for the whole. Well, they get all the back tax. Anyway. Well, 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 yeah, but I mean, this is, this is part of the yeah. logic to tax. Well, we tax. give it all back to our communities. We That's give it all back. back to tax. That's what I'm saying. You said this money would go into it. Is that what you were saying? The lodging, the lodging tax does. Yeah. yeah. But what we're right. talking about here is going out of, coming out of the I know, but, fund. Okay. What, what I was getting at was that y'all said, you know, of course, you didn't get any benefit from it. helping all the towns do, with the lodging tax gives a benefit. Yeah. They don't benefit our districts. We don't spend it in our districts. We spend it on the people in our in our in our district. So I can't I, I can't take that money 
about trucks. Oh, I know that. I know that. Fire department, Mayfield, Hamilton is, Hackenberg is, you know, and all. Yeah. All of us. We were feeling we get old body taxes. Right. Give them back to the county. Yeah. But still, you're talking about possibly something that would be it would be a blanket policy where <coughs> you create so many jobs in the hospitality or service industry type thing that you would you could. You could create so many jobs and you, you could give that tax break for so long for anybody and you could start it say Jan January 1st to whoever gets started after January 1st 2015 or something like that yes. it could be from from this point on yes. not just for anybody not anybody in the past necessarily but you know starting at a starting point and might be yeah, but the ones in the past won't like it too much well yeah, that's true too. But. <laughs> but I think that's really the distinction, gentlemen. There is no one in the past. Respectfully, yeah. but there is somebody in the future. Yes, and, and I hope there, there is. is. We all hope there, there is. We're giving everything away to them and, and buying them to come in. But we have to do everything else. I mean, we're going to hold this bad. We'll never get out of it. Yes, sir. And, and, and if we can grow the pie, hopefully we can get out of that, out of that hole. Um, you know, I, I don't. I completely understand your concern for the revenues, but having said that, you know, I think we we, we don't have to grow the pie. We can't we can't cut it to, to try to to try to backstop all the needs that that that, that Mr. Jackson speaks of and others. Did, did Hampton and what's this called? Spade. Spade. Hampton is the other big life. Did they did they ever ask for something like this? No, I reckon they have. No, no. not just no. one year. We were not aware that they didn't get. I wasn't. I've been here 20 years, no one has ever come yeah. asking for a basement or right. property tax for a motel. And, right. and this had uh, AAA manufacturing on it. Would y'all look at this in a different way? Instead of all the created 47 jobs. <coughs> Did AAA manufacturing? Yeah, just say if it's a manufacturing operation still of a hotel, would you uh, view this in a different light? I wouldn't want to. <laughs> because I've always had to stick with that one until my call center. Big time. We'll be paying. How many more years do you like, brother? You know, like right out of 11 years. <laughs> I don't know. It's between $1.4 million. And they were supposed to be in high paying, you know, decent paying jobs. I haven't None tried your bed with you. No, no, it was Mercedes for Marion County cost for seven hundred and fifty thousand in Winfield and seven hundred and fifty thousand in Hamilton. Winfield's already closed. Hamilton's having a hard time. We, and we don't have no way to reach the we don't know how we can get the money back, I'm talking. No, they own the building. And they get the occupational tax. The city of Hamilton's probably dropping a hundred thousand a year occupational tax off that job over there. They got it. We don't get nothing. Unless they buy something, most of them works out of the county anyway. How about, uh, and this is just a quick thought, we're kind of compromising here. Uh, instead of property tax, maybe uh, a rebate of some of the uh, lodging tax. That would be based on performance then. And then if he doesn't perform, he doesn't get it. You're talking about the, the uh, lodging tax? One percent. Well, it just, I mean, it'd, it'd come back to your, if you're, if you're going to cut it off, it's going to cut us off every job. Well, this, again, this is new money. This is money not already in your coffers. I'm not saying give it all. I'm saying give it a percent, maybe split it. Well, once again, we'd have to go back to the, the other uh, hotels and cut their areas off, too. Gentlemen, we have to consider how many laws was passed in Montgomery this year that we haven't had in the past. You know, think about how many laws, how many things have been changed money-wise in laws in Montgomery that we haven't had in the past because this is now and we're talking about the future. Now, y'all talking about money that you're going to get in the future. You're not taking money that Mr. Safety has paid you the last five years because he hasn't paid you anything. So you're not giving him anything you already have. You're giving him five years. And if y'all are like me, probably y'all may not even be here in five years. But y'all have to look at the future. And what are we going to do? 
to attract people to this county. Um, I've had an opportunity to talk to two different people that are traveling back and forth from Tupelo to Lincoln to that motel I've talked to. Them. And they talk about locating more of their operation between the two. If they don't have any incentive in Marion County, where's our tax money going to continue to go that's going right now across the state line that you don't get anything from? We, we, we don't start right. something now. Mm -hmm. We don't start something Shut now pocket, huh? to change people's minds about <laughs> Marion County because we are the number one place, Russell, you know, they're still cut off because 24 is not completed the quarter. Once that goal is completed, you're going to see that going that way. We've got to do something now to help stop the flow of tax money from jobs. People are, they're tripping and quadrissing. The, the amount of people and the amount of money is going to be sick because we're sitting over here worried about $5,000 could be a good example. What are we going to do to keep that in view and look for how? We need to be forming a tri-city type thing instead of worrying about what's going on 10 years ago. It doesn't matter what happened 10 years ago. We got to look at what's going to happen in the next 10 years. Okay, you're right, some ways there. But don't you understand? They took our coal service tax and gave it to the three seats, 100 grand, wouldn't it? We don't get that anymore. Okay. The, uh, what was it they took away from us? Yeah, TVA tax. Y'all got part of it too, Phil. All the cities did. We don't get that anymore. And then sometimes that was $250,000, wouldn't it? Over 300 for that person. Yeah, okay. We don't get that no more. You're talking about taking away. They took us away. Well, we can't build an old Jude Dale house. You know, they've done it in Montgomery. Roger Becker and Mike Billy is throwing $25,000 apiece. And Roger's not even there. Am I right? Okay. Well, I was just going to say that. $25,000, and he's just giving it out here everywhere. And he's not even married anymore. Can y'all explain that to me? I mean, when you take everything away from me, what can y'all do? What can we do? Well, we want to help. I want to help every way we can. What's going on? Yeah. I mean, we, we, yeah. we can't get nothing out of Montgomery. They ain't helped us here. They took away from us, didn't they, Bob? You know, the lodging tax may be sort of just a poor dog. Have you done any good in Montgomery? Yeah, I know. And you want them like we got over there. Republicans, and they ain't doing no good. Well, we're trying to get them to come back. Well, you know, they got to get over there. Well, you know, they got to get over there. Well, you know, they got to get over there. Well, you know, they got to get over there. Well, you know, they got to get over there. Well, you know, they got to get over there. Basically, tell us we're on our own pretty much right yeah. now. We're, 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 we're in the same boat, we're on our own. Yeah. Y'all do. Y'all may want to do it. Let us ask you how about the, the lot between the lodge yeah, and, and, and the abatement thing. On the, I don't know. The lodge may be easier for us. Yeah, it may be. I, mean, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, just whether, <laughs> but the lodge and. And that's fine for me. As long as it. However, whatever works best. It's just we want to have it. I don't We want to have it. Does all the lodging tax go into that TRC? All of the lodging tax does, but that's going to be a state law that's not just for Marion County that y'all would have to ask Scott about. Oh. I got one more comment. I'll wait for it. We've had two different retailers that we've talked to in the last six months. Y'all probably heard this question before. How can your county help me? How do I go tell them we can't help? How do we have trapped anybody here now? How many of don't really We look like a retailer. Why is that? But if they're a retailer, we can pay their taxes. Okay. But they ask. Like that was the question. How can they help the county help us to get started? And I have to say, well, I don't know what to do. Same way we did 3M, nobody else came in here, you know, we thought here, but you, you give them a tax abatement if you're a business. But as I say, I don't know who made the distinction between business and motels back 
back to the dead, but they've done it. That's the, that's the situation we've got to get over. How can we be fair uh, to all and uh, not be preferential to one? Well, we're not asking for preferential treatment, but I will tell you what we brought is not even comparable to anything else that we see. I agree. And, and, that, and that's what you're looking for. Yeah. And regardless of if you help me or not, I will tell you, this man came to see us how many years? Three years? Four years? And we said no. We didn't know what was here. But I will tell you, after doing this and making this investment, they're some of the best people in this community. Oh, yeah. You're you're living, living. But you're nobody living. would know that. Nobody would stop. I didn't. I didn't stop. I didn't give it a second thought. I said, do you in Alabama? I can't even say the damn thing. But, but now that I'm here and, and I've work with people there and we've created these jobs. There's so much potential in this town, towns and county that is not realized. You know, there's developers that look all over for the next great place. And what makes the next great place? Good workforce, good education, good climate is important, but also accessibility. Talking about the interstate coming through, y'all have unbelievable accessibility. You have rail, you have interstate, you have rivers, you have lakes, there's a lot here, but nobody will come because they have no clue. So what we're asking is not, you know, y'all are in a very tough position. I'm in business because I would never want to be in your position. Because <laughs> I don't want to have to be accountable to anybody but myself. We have no investors other than my family for that reason. But you have a, you have a duty to your town and your county to make it a better place. And the only way that you'll do that, you have to draw a line and say, what's happened in the past has happened in the past. That's fine. You know, if, if he never came to see us, we never would be there. But he didn't accept what's always been done. Accepting what's always been done is great, but you stay exactly where you are. That hotel would not have come, our hotel, not me. I'm just a middleman. The building's there. It's going to be there years after I'm gone. I could be gone tomorrow. Something could happen to me driving back to Mississippi. But this man brought that investment here. But he did appreciate something. It. Well, he didn't, don't appreciate me, appreciate him. I do. But it would have never happened if we would have just done whatever he's always done. And that's what we're asking. And, and even besides us, besides this hotel, if this county will grow and choose us to grow, there aren't, you're going to have to take steps and you're going to have to hurt some people. Well, that, it is, the potential really is that used to have incentives for manufacturing and it isn't now the same. Now you have to consider for retail and for service industry and I guess that's that's the thing now is that's where it's changed. Yes. These these jobs these forty seven folks money. They spend it just like folks working at into the hour or three in or somewhere else. It's important to them and, and they've created we've created jobs. And it's needed jobs. And uh, he's got a lot more applications than folks he can hire. So the, there's a need here of uh, even uh, the type of service jobs that he's created. Uh, and what I'm saying is, it's also a marketing piece for the county because he's bringing folks in this county now that will stop and look that has never looked that has driven by us. And so, because of the caliber hotel he's built. This is bringing the Toyota supplier down to stay four days. I had to meet Jerry's man. Uh, that actually would never, he'd always stay in Cupola. He'd always driven by us. Yeah. And so this is what we're trying to do. We need more of what Sunday's done. So it's an industrial recruitment tool that's yes. sitting there on the other side. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think you made a call. Uh, you in my mind, way of thinking, you, you, you've, you've struck a nerve, you've made a point here that I would not, you know, that makes sense. So, uh, I think I, that we can talk about it. I think, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm less, you know, uh, so. I'm, I'm, you know, my mind, I'm not, my mind's not set in that. It's, it's walk, you, know, I, you know, the fairness thing to me was, you know, Make a point. Uh, maybe we need to take that point and, and uh, talk it over and, and see what uh, we can reach 
to uh, build a ground in here. I'm in the same business, y'all. I, I get hired in four years. Or yeah. uh, get fired so far. No. Good. I don't know how this all works. So. Um, but we just want to work with you and the person I hear you and they're going to come together with us. I just sure appreciate it. Let's talk about them all again, wherever. Whoever we can, while we can, we're going to Thank y'all for listening. We appreciate you coming. Well, I hate you that for 20 minutes. You get three votes, you lucky. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you. Good to have you. Thank you, Phil. Thank you,
Barn Greenle. Barn Greenle. Hey, the Barn Greenle. Yeah. Okay. Uh, first order of business, you know, we've talked about um, Canada 85 with, with that contract to the state, and the bids came in right at a half a million dollars. And SD Bond is, is a little better, and just, I need a letter concurring in the award for the Alabama High Department of Transportation to make that award. Can you ask me a question about 85? Uh, have we been fined X number of dollars for something? Uh, not that I'm aware of. I was told what, the other day. What, what kind of fine? I, mean, I don't know of any kind of in this water drainage situation, any kind of barricade. Not to my knowledge, no. I heard it was like no. 16 grand we've been fined. We've been fined? That's what we, I've heard. We, we we come to the end. Have a, that's my memory book. We did come to the end. Not, no, sir, we haven't. Not that I'm aware of. I don't you know, think if there's so. something maybe we don't know about another department, but I'm not aware of any fines. Yeah, we didn't put the proper or something or other. Yeah. I mean, we didn't done no work on that road yet. Well, not we, we we went and made people move some encroachments, but as far as the work, that's contract work. Um, I, that's an unusual comment. I mean, I've never heard that, so I don't I don't know how to respond to it. Okay, that's all. Um, but that being said, I need a, 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 a concurrence in the award of the bid to ST Bond for that project. All in favor? Okay. Next order of business is if some of y'all I don't recall who went. You know, we asked for an advancement of funds for Canada 42. Well, we received that advancement. Now I've got an agreement between the Department of Transportation and Marion County Commission outlining those costs. It, it's an advancement of federal funds. Total project cost is $1.7 million. So that is currently in the July letting date. And I just need for y'all to enter into that agreement with State of Alabama and a resolution to go along with it. Do you motion? I will get moved. I'll second. All in favor? Right. Okay, I'm, little, out, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm out for 29. You got in there. Huh? We, we're working on 29. We're still waiting to hear back from Geotex. Um, probably the first meeting in August, we'll have our resolution and, and doc papers ready to go ahead to set that in motion. You know, as far as getting the, the engineering, the, the preliminary engineering done on that project and the planning part. But um, Maybe that, next that year, was maybe. the next one after we do 42, unless y'all see otherwise. But, um, it's going to be, you know, we're just going to have to, you know, we're borrowing some next year's funds to fund this one. So just as soon as the funds get back to a level that will fund that project, Kenny will we'll get started on it. But it's, it's the next one in line. How does the water on 42 begin again? Fix and start. Um, we probably going to start, could start this week on 42 putting that water in. We That's talked about that at the water board meeting in regards to the construction of 42. We're going to make sure that all that's done. Prior to any road construction being done, we will have to come back and, and, and create us some problems up on a new paved highway. Can you call and see what's going on water now? Well, I can. I, can. I didn't know you had a problem with your water. Big bad problem. Hey, got none. That's about the road to me. Hey, hey. That Canada Road 33, that Canada Road 33 project was a 233. 233. That State Route 233 was a bad project. All that rock in there had some issues with. Maybe on the pipe, it's created some problems with it. Other, other item of bid is, if y'all if y'all recall, we, we did an airport bid, and we, we just did a bid opening, and actually the bids came in a little high. We had one bid, SD Bund bid on that project. We came in at 1.9 million, and what I'd like to recommend the commission do is, is since it was just one bid, allow us to negotiate it, and then come back to y'all, and we'll look at it. Um, Brooke and Brooke on Miss Nichols. Miss <laughs> 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 Latin. Miss <laughs> Latin. And, and we'll, we'll look at the funding as far as the county's part of it, but I just, since it's one better, I'd like to recommend that we negotiate and then we'll come back with the price and see where we stand. It's on the airport. It's, it's on the airport. On that runway rehab project. Yes. I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Gentlemen, that's all I've got in the shop. Oh, no, you got it? All I've got right now. Oh, one other thing, one other thing, real quick. It doesn't have to be an official business. We're doing that demo you know, on Canada 89, and I, I've got to get Brock called me, and I haven't heard anything, and, and you know, we, we may want to pursue that other avenue, but right now we're doing that a demonstration project with that asphalt difference in what we did. Yeah, it's okay. on Canada 89. It's going to be Wednesday morning at about 9 o'clock, sometime 9, 9.30. And um, I'd love for all y'all to come if you can. And it's, you know, those guys are nice enough to bring that piece of equipment in here and, and demonstrate it. And, and if we can look at it and evaluate where we're at.
for a good 10 five row program. You need a motor grader in the front end. And, and for a 9 front end loader. Well, I, I might be able to get over there. I, I stay in the can. truck. I understand. Then don't worry about it. it. You, you, can, you know how bad it was. So you can always come back and look at it. But if y'all got time, I know that it would be good. Do what? It would stabilize. I never seen one of them work. It, it, it's pretty cost effective because you don't have to remove material out. And you really, you just, you plow in some cement. It's, it's called what they call an FDR, a full depth reclamation. You put in 5% of cement by volume. And, and within a day, you got you got to travel away. You're back on. Mm -hmm. you know, well, that's good. So, and yeah, it's like a big table. Yeah. Yeah. Now yeah. 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 the machine for sale? Yeah, they sell it. It's a, what kind of money are you talking about? Well, you, a new one's about one hundred and twenty-five, thirty thousand. You get a used one for about seventy or eighty, a pretty good one. And you know, we just need to look at it and see how effective it is. If it does, you know, we've got a lot of area where the road's pretty good, but you'll come up to a hundred, two hundred foot section, it's just pumping and waving. Oh yeah, you know, it, 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 it takes all that out. Take, right? it, it's a cost-effective way of fixing that without digging all that out, hauling off, putting back in, hot, trucking in material. You use the existing material. The good thing is we use sand and gravel, which is a, a primary component of concrete. It's a low-grade concrete, basically what it is when you mix that cement. So we've got good material for this type of repair. What about we'll the, look at it and see. Uh, what about the timber that they don't pay so long? That, that's what I was talking about. Brock May, who with F and W, represents the timber company in Scott, and I talked a little bit about it. He called me. He called me back. And said, Michael, we had forgot you. We're still trying to sort through it and decide what we need to do, but that's, that was a couple of weeks ago. I'm going to call him back and find out what they've done, and then we can decide. And about him or what? Yeah, yeah. You know, we gave him an estimate, and we had the meeting, gave him an estimate, and, um, you know, I hadn't heard back, but I'll, I'll follow up with him and, and see if they've made any progress. Did you go over to the Reed Road and try to patch that up? We, we, we did some work on Reed Road. We sure did. I went and looked at it, and, um, it would have a bunch of little holes in it, but <coughs> I think that's probably in a lot better shape now. Okay, good. Yeah. But whatever y'all need is what we're going to do. One question. Do we have still access to the strip patching or the your patching machine? Yeah, we can. And, 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 and actually, actually, on that, that FDR project we're going to do on 89, we're, we're going to come in <coughs> the day after and, 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 and cover that back up. You know, put cover that because see, it, it'll be a base material, and we'll come back and put JG on it. We'll need we'll need to surface that and put the JG. On. Are you going to do any more patching for us? Well, well, well it, if we like need to, we can. I mean, you, uh, when you go, when you grind that up and you put the concrete back to it, you still going to have to put the JG treatment on. That's right. Yeah. They, 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 that's a base layer. For, well, basically, we are just to do the base. It, it's do, redoing the base, and we'll come back and put a JG on it. They, they pumped it. Where's my old car, right? Yeah. <laughs> I said, take a motor grip, leave my own. Oh, we yeah, and, 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 right. you, and you can, but this is, this is a more permanent type of repair, and it's going to give you a, you're going to correct your cross slopes in your road, you're going to get your drainage right, you know, you're going to get your super elevation. It, it just helps you get things, it helps recreate that proper sloping crown of the roadway and give you some structural strength as well. It fixes drainage also? Yeah, because yeah. you're gonna you're gonna blade it, you're gonna blade it and regrade the, 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 the cross slope, the super elevation, whatever, whichever if you fly. You know, and if your road the ruts are lower than the ditches and you're into it. Yeah, and, and listen, I'm sure this <laughs> it, it, it's probably not the tenth point of the world, but it's it, it's something it's something we, 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 we need to at least well, we'll send, that. I'm gonna send Kyle and motor grader. Now we we're gonna hit some of those other areas ahead of time with with the pothole picture. We're just trying to we're trying to figure out what can be most effective type of work we can do. And we'll look at this and y'all can evaluate it for yourself. If it's something you think we can all use, we'll, we'll look at it we'll first. If not, we'll go on about the business. But we're just trying to look at it and, and make a good decision on what works better. Well, I tell you, if you're going to do like you said, then we'll take them second. Well, Bob done had two rows done with it. Yeah, you know, Bob, of course, I hate to say this, half our material went off in the ditch. When Brian Montgomery bladed it off in the ditch. But we had to go. We had a funeral. We couldn't stay there. We had to, we had to go through some visitation. But it did. It's done pretty good, hasn't it? It's done well. Done well. Yeah. You know, that, and that's of course you're looking at landfill trucks, garbage trucks going up through there. Yeah. So you get that's worst case scenario. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, that was bad. And you go. <laughs> he garbage truck on a lot of these roads. Like it just don't, just don't carry. You know, especially when you get what sixteen yards on it. 
Yeah. Don't push it. This, but this, it would help us go back behind it yeah. later on down the road. Yeah. This, this is not a bad thing. We just need to look. I'm not saying we just jump all in, but I think it's worth us taking a look at it and, and evaluating and looking at our cost, the type of repair, the time factor involved in it. Well, you know. Okay, are you want to give a just get a concrete truck to come out and. We get a cement concrete. truck. It'll be cement. It'll be Portland cement. It's not concrete. It's actually just raw Portland cement. Yeah. Because they got a truck that augers it off. Or yeah. they, they got a truck that augers it off. Now, we just made, does, man. Yeah, it's just, it's just that old Portland bag cement like yeah. it goes in concrete, you know. Yeah. Um, and it, it's a low grade concrete, is basically what it is. What do you get out of it? Well, this is coming. It's, it's coming out of Birmingham. It's, I uh, can't think of the name of it. I, I put, I'm not. Y'all, y'all wouldn't be happy. I'm not going to be here for it. Y'all probably be glad of that. But Lynn's going to, I kind of put Lynn in charge and kind of coordinate everything. I'm going to be on vacation, but. Um, well, you need vacation. You need a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess maybe yeah. I will be here. You <laughs> maybe, maybe I will be here. You, you've been gone since the first two years. I know it. I know it. Where are you going this time? I uh, same place I was going the last time I told you. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm like, during this meeting. Well, let me ask you, how do we keep getting demonstrations with all these people? Yeah, I was being slow. Being I about beg, but that's the reason I've asked y'all, some of y'all that have it. You can demonstrate twice for me. Uh, I, I, yeah, we just to go Can I get a demonstration on some of mine? They want to see it. Yeah, they well, were they, um, that's a good question, Bob. And, and honestly, they asked me, are you going to have your people there? And I said, I'm going to try to I'm going to buy them off. Oh, and that's no. why I tried to stress, well, if y'all can make it, 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 it helps them to sell it. Sell it and y'all understand what it is. We don't need it. We don't need it. I mean, that's, I'm not sitting here. I don't I don't reckon I get a cut out of it if you buy one. But, um, Right? But one time got a new bag. Yeah. 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 But, but it, it's it worth looking at. I'll all in favor? Turn over to the journal. Oh, I'm for it.